Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. I've discovered proof that next gen consoles are in fact real. And you're gonna see a photo right here. Now, try not to focus on the incredibly beautiful man holding the console, but that's an Xbox Series X. It's real, folks. It's real, and I can prove it. I've got the controller right here in my hands, and I booted up that Series X. It's in fact real. Now, in all seriousness, when I did hit that power button, a wave of happiness hit me. I was like, wow, next gen consoles are in fact here. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people got screwed over with their pre-orders. Some got pushed very far back, even into the holiday season. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video sharing my thoughts on the console between quick resume, backwards compatibility, game pass, the overall offerings out of the box, and just share my impressions. I know there's a million and one Xbox Series X impressions out there because everyone underneath the sun seemingly had this console early. I did not. So guess what? Here you are on launch day getting my impressions on the system. And you bet I put this system through every single test because I did what no sane man would do the second they got their Series X. You want to know the first game that entered my console? Oh, if you know me, you know what it is. It's only right. It's only right. Nothing says next gen quite like firing up Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic from 2003 and playing it in 60 FPS. Look, auto HDR and all that stuff, it's beautiful. It looks great, it runs well. And that's kind of the, the give and take here of the Xbox Series X launch. Unlike the PlayStation 5, Series X isn't coming with a bulk of brand new titles. And for a lot of people, they've really stung Xbox for that, especially after the Halo Infinite delay. A lot of people are going, well, there's no games, there's no games. But au contraire, if you have access to a backwards compatible library, Xbox's launch titles are actually in the thousands. I mean, look, I'll, I'll be honest with everyone. My Xbox One library, you wanna know how big that is? This is the extent of my Xbox One library. I'm holding it in my hands. Isn't that incredible? But, when it comes to other games that the Xbox Series X can access and improve, we got a whole stack of them. And like I said, I put all these games through their respective tests. We got Jade Empire. This is a Bioware RPG. So good, by the way. We've got the Battlefront games. And of course, also Battlefront 2 actually comes with a bonus map here in the uh, backwards compatible version. Runs well, like, it's just incredible, man. There are so many games that you can go back to and just slide right into your Xbox. You guys already know these had to go in here, come on. Yes, really. And I'm waiting for Square Enix to put out a trilogy on like the PS5 or something like that, remastering these. They are, they are solid games, I'll stand by that. Heck, I even went back and threw in some Lost Odyssey. So there is a wide catalog of titles if you go through backwards compatibility. Now I know that's not what next gen is all about for a lot of people, but this brings me to Game Pass because Game Pass today has just rolled in EA Play. And you wanna know what the first two games I downloaded on my Series X via Game Pass were? SSX and Medal of Honor Airborne. EA Play, while I know a lot of people don't like EA, adds an insane amount of value to Game Pass. Sifting through the library, I was sitting in this room here with my brother and we were going through everything because he's actually going to inherit my 1S and he's gonna have access to my Game Pass subscription. So I'm showing him the library, making some suggestions on games that he can check out and seeing all the Dead Space games, all the Mass Effect games via backwards compatibility, seeing SSX there, one of my favorites of last gen. I adore this game so much. Seeing Medal of Honor there, I grew up on Medal of Honor with Rising Sun and hopping into Airborne for the first time in a while. The game controls like poo poo, I'll be honest with you. But still, going back to that was fantastic and seeing all these games look a little better, running a little bit better. It was just amazing to dive into that Game Pass library and just let my, my desires take over, just hopping from game to game to game because a lot of these games I was testing out, they were 360 games, so they're like four or five gigabytes max. So honestly, I was just downloading them real quickly and just rifling through them, testing them out. It was so much fun, but the ones that really stuck with me were SSX and Medal of Honor Airborne, especially SSX. Going back to that game, it still controls so well, feels so good. I really, really like that game. But this is not an opinion piece on SSX. My impressions is that while some people have really knocked the Xbox library, I think there is insane value to Game Pass and today it just got better. Also, we saw yesterday the addition of a trial for Disney Plus, which I had sort of hinted at on the Ham Radio podcast just last week. Go ahead, here's a here's a clip of that. Like you're gonna see something big get added to Game Pass. Like, like a, a big subscription 
something along those lines. So while the Series X doesn't come with a launch title, it's gonna really push the tech super hard. I was very impressed just by going into Game Pass and sifting through everything that was there and picking out a bunch of games that I was interested in, downloading them, and starting to play them right away. I had access to such a nostalgic library that ran better and looks better. And to me, there is value in that because we know the games are coming. A lot about Xbox right now is the future. We have so many talented studios underneath the Xbox brand, right? We got, for a quick list, Obsidian, Bethesda, you've got Inex Isle. I mean, the list just goes on. They've got like 20 plus incredibly talented studios. So for me, I feel like I'm investing in the future here. While maybe Series X isn't boasting that crazy launch title, like say a Miles Morales or a Demon's Souls remake, I'm perfectly content, honestly, waiting and enjoying just this back catalog of incredible titles to sift through that offers great value and it only continues to add more because it's not just EA Play, right? I saw Doom Eternal in there. That just came out earlier this year. Elder Scrolls Online was in there. That is a gigantic, amazing MMO. Like, it is crazy how much value this package boasts. You can hop into so many different things. It's borderline overwhelming. Now, as for system functionality, I did give Quick Resume a little bit of a rip and I was impressed. It's really hard to comment on it other than, wow, this is something that feels really next gen. Going from Master Chief Collection over to SSX and then back again, really cool. Just, it's amazing because I envision a future where I will have a multiplayer game that I am enjoying with some friends. They go, all right, I'm hopping off for the night and you immediately Quick Resume back to the single player game or vice versa. They hop on, you're playing your single player game, you pause it, you quick resume back to the multiplayer game, boom, you're in. There's a lot of accessibility and things being instantaneous with the Series X from quick load times where you immediately start up a game, even if it's a 360 game, right? I know that's not super impressive, but even when it's a 360 game, it just fires up loads in a matter of seconds and boom, you're done. There is that instantaneous feeling there and it, it feels good it felt familiar as someone who's been hopping on the pc a lot lately to sort of mentally prepare for next gen on some level so i'm really just happy it's lived up to that hype internally for me also i want to talk about the controller now i've always been a huge fan of the xbox one controller i personally feel they control the best i feel like they just fit my hands the best i've always really like them. Now, a little bit of an inside story here. I strained my thumb in the saddest way, my left thumb. It pretty much was from using my thumb to text too much. I was just doing that. You know how sometimes you overreach and eventually you start to get a strain in here down your thumb. I had to ice it for a while. Like I actually really messed my thumb up the week of next gen, of course. But with this controller, the pain actually subsided while I was trying to play games. I couldn't play on my PS4, but the way that this controller is structured, there's a degree of support here that I just need to shout out. Honestly, as someone who literally had a physical ailment, I could play games on this and it felt amazing. Not only that, I want to shout out the D-pad. The D-pad on the Series X, sorry, I'm making sure I'm not clicking too many things because I'm actually downloading games as we speak, but the D-pad feels a lot better. D-pad's always been a weakness, I feel, for Xbox in the past, especially on the 360, it was, it was way too soft. This is a little more clicky, where it's not as pressy, say as like a PlayStation controller, where you can really feel the cushion almost when you push in. This is very, as you can listen, it's very clicky, which some people like, I personally like it because there is that sync. Let's say you're doing a fighting game, you wanna do a quarter circle forward, like it's just, it feels easy, even though it's a little clicky. I can imagine because of its uh, texture, that kind of rubbing your fingers along here a lot during a fighting game could start to hurt. And I don't think Xbox has always been the place to go for a fighting game, so I believe that will continue on. There's also texture in the back that just feels good to grip. The trigger stoppers themselves feel good. They're responsive. These aren't too clicky, which I always liked. There's a good happy medium there. And I know it sounds like I'm overanalyzing things, or at least I think I sound that way because I've noticed a lot of videos online, which I've seen on Twitter just very quickly of people like really going in depth on a controller. And maybe it's just because I've tried to keep my head down so I can enjoy it for myself. But quite honestly, like I was actually really impressed with this controller. I know a lot of the hype has been around, of course, the DualSense. But for me, this is just a continuation of what they were already doing well, so they didn't have to change much here. But I just had to shout out, of course, the design of the support for your hands, for someone like my hand size. Uh, these, these controllers feel great. Uh, the triggers are great. Everything's responsive. And that's really all you could ask for, right? It's not a science. It's been mastered for a while, but uh, it seems like the fine tuning here with the D-pad, I was a fan of. And overall, 
it felt good to play. So if you're like me and you're nostalgic, then the Xbox Series X already comes with baked in value, right? You got all these games here and plenty more that you can download or you can go into Game Pass and get, or you can go online and just haul in a bunch of 360 titles, old Xbox One games. You know, for me, my third party machine was honestly the PS4 for an entire generation. I only hopped on my Xbox One for reviews, but I think given the power of the Series X, quick resume, a lot of this backwards compatibility, the buffs that these backwards compatible titles get, I think I'm gonna be using my Series X a lot this coming generation. This video isn't designed to convince you, hey, go spend $500, but more so to just showcase my impressions, some of the features of the system, how I feel about them thus far, and you can kind of just gauge your interest on that based off of what's there. Of course, I will always be the person who says, wait for the software, right? There's no reason for you to rush out and get a Series X right now. I'm an enthusiast on a level where I'm personally doing this for my career, so I want to have the systems in hand. You guys know me. I like to do reviews on games. Having the Series X, which is a very powerful third-party machine, will be great for companies who want to give you the best version of their game, and we've seen a lot of review copies shift from the PS5 over to the Series X already, so I think that will continue on. So for me, it's more of like an investment as well in my business. Overall, I was just really happy with everything that came out of the box here, and I'm a little more excited because I just got a new 4K TV. So it's just been a really fun day today, and I'm just so happy for games, and I can't wait for the PS5 to share my thoughts on that and talk with all of you about that. But for now, these are my thoughts on the Series X. It may not come with that launch title, but it's a very powerful system, doing quick resume, just messing around with all these nostalgic games. Uh, it brought me a lot of joy today, and I know it will continue to do so, of course, with Game Pass offering this baked-in insane value, rolling in so many subscription services. So yeah, really happy with things. And now I dish it off to you. Did you pick up a Series X today? Let me know in the comments down below if you didn't. What did this video do for you at all? Are you interested in the future of the Xbox? Are you gonna wait for maybe you see what they do with Bethesda? Will that be where you make your purchasing decision? Let me know. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons as well as all the members here on the channel who allow for opportunities like this. Seriously, I mean, thank you for this life. Yeah, I would not have been able to do this without your support there. Let's get to gaming, everybody. It's next gen time, all right? Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.